Raise your hand if you're talking. Raise your hand. Hey guys, I've got my sexy voice today. Something about the weather is not agreeing with me. So if you will, listen up. We'll get through this. You've got a handout. This is your shopping list. It is time to go get your interview attire. So you'll be ready for your mock interview, your networking activities, lots of fun stuff coming your way. Why do you have to start the job search early? Why do you have to get this suit early? We used to teach this course as a senior level course. And what we realized is that people want you now. They want you as a junior, they want you in internships. And it takes just a little time to get this ready. You don't wear a suit every day. As a student, you're not supposed to. But as a business major, as a junior, there comes a time that people will expect you to wear a matching coat and pants, or ladies, a coat and skirt if you prefer, when you go into the business world. Does that mean you're gonna wear this every day at work? No. Why do you dress up to go to an interview? Why do you think? Best impression. And if your resume looks almost like everybody else's resume on this row, it's horrible to say, but there may not be any other way to differentiate you from somebody else competing from the same job. They may start looking at your clothes. It shows you know what's going on, it also shows respect. You're respecting somebody's time. You made the effort, right? It's like going on a date. You made the effort to clean up, wear your best clothes. If you don't follow these rules, here's what happens. They throw your resume in the garbage. What do I want for you? I want you to get a good job, make a lot of money, and I name the next business school after you, okay? We, that's all we want for you. We want you to put your best face forward. So that's why we spend a little time on these soft skills. Somebody's got to teach you how to, how to look right. Here's what you want to look like. You want them to look at your clothing, sort of check a mental box. Wow, you look normal. If you stand out, you got it wrong. If they remember what you wore, you got it wrong. You're going for authoritative, I know what I'm talking about. I'm conservative, I'm not going to wear anything crazy, and I'm competent. Can you convince people you're competent with your clothing? Well, for a little while, okay? You've got to prove yourself once you get in the job, but at least to get your foot in the door. You agree with that statistic? Would you hire this person? What if, it's, what if it's a customer facing position in a bank in Manhattan? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what? That'd be scary, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? People in the workplace that may be hiring you are between the ages of 20 and 80. Would a 20 year old perceive this person differently than somebody in their late 70s or 80s? Yeah, but you want the job. You don't know who's going to interview you. It might be a committee. You've got to skew to the most conservative person that you're going to be interviewing with. What does somebody 80 years old think about that person? You are a true business major. You are in the right profession. Yeah, there you go. There you go. But what, what stereotypes might you have of this person? Do they make good decisions? Impulsive, reckless. Would you want this person managing your money if you think those are the traits this conveys? No business, particularly finance and accounting, very, very conservative. Now, if you're in marketing, ladies, you might get away with a pink blouse, and gentlemen, you might get away with a pink tie. That's as far as it goes for you going off the grid here. Okay, you hear a lot of people saying business casual, and I think you heard Shannon DeBooth last week mention she had on, what, a, dre a dress and a sweater and some boots. That was totally appropriate at her place of work. What we're talking about, though, is we call this business formal. We call this boardroom attire. That's business casual. You're probably going to wear that when you get a job. Some of you can pass enough for business casual today. But what we're talking about 
is on the left. Okay, the suit should be dark or neutral. If it looks like gangster stripes and you in the back row could see if I had a striped suit on, I did it wrong, okay? You don't want real wide stripes. You want really subtle. Uh, gentlemen, you're probably thinking you can get away with wearing your navy sport coat. You can't. The coat and the pants have to match. What's the difference, gentlemen, between a suit coat and a sport coat? Comes with the pants, okay. And a vest, it may be, exactly. What else? Could be a different material. The big thing is the buttons, though. Usually a sport coat will have accent buttons. Maybe they're gold, maybe they're a different color. But a suit will have really subtle buttons. If it has them on the arm, they'll, they'll be the same color. They'll blend in, right? Just one monochromatic look, and the coat and pants will match. So what would be the best color for a suit? Charcoal, navy. Ladies, you do a little better with a black suit, particularly if you look young or you're short. It gives you just a little bit more authority. Gentlemen, you have to be a little bit careful with a black suit. For gentlemen, sometimes it looks either too high fashion or it looks like a funeral director. You tend to do better with that charcoal gray I heard somebody mention or the navy. That's a pretty good option for you. Okay, the fit matters too. My favorite alteration man is Mr. Choey. They're on Emory and Thornton. He gets a lot of my money because nothing off the rack fits anybody just right. What does the baggy clothes or the too tight clothes convey? What does that tell you about a person? They did. So what would you think about their attention to detail? What grade would you give them? Poor. Poor. So what if this is somebody that's going to keep up with your bank account? Would you want that person keeping up with their ba your bank account? These things have a perception. When you go to your etiquette training, you're going to learn that you shouldn't put salt and pepper on your food before you taste it. Why not? Bad to the chef, but it also shows charisma that you make a decision but without complete information. You need to taste it first, right? Maybe it's salty enough, maybe it's peppery enough. So all these things have really subtle clues in the workplace and people who will be hiring you know that, they'll know that. Okay, good on the left. What's wrong with their suits on the right? What's wrong with this one? 1980s called, please return the disco suit, right? Okay, this guy on the top, great looking. He looks like a fashion model to me. What's wrong with that? Yeah. You mentioned that a suit might come with a vest. Used to, bankers would wear the vest. Now nobody really wears a vest with a suit. So if you buy a suit with a vest, keep it. Wear it with jeans on the weekend. It'll be a nice fashion statement when you go out and about. What is wrong with that? Fresh, freshman white, isn't it? Okay, so... They've interviewed five candidates today. The hiring team goes back to their office. What do they say about the guy that wore that? What a, and if, if, exactly. And where does his resume go? Yeah, yeah. So if you stand out, if they remember what you wear, the game is over. <clears throat> Don Draper from Mad Men, he is your best role model for how to dress, gentlemen. Okay, usually the two-button suit looks better, and it gives you a deeper V, and if you wear a white shirt, your face looks better. Why do you want to wear a white or a bright shirt? I coughed all night. I probably got dark circles under my eyes, but I can fake it with a white shirt because it's brightening up your face. You'll be nervous. You won't have slept well, so the white shirt gives you just a little more oomph. You look a little brighter, you look a little bit more alive there. So the two button suit that buttons just a little bit lower like the one I've got on, gives you a deeper V where you get more, more of your face to be lit up. Okay, when your jacket is hanging down at your side, you ought to be able to cup your hands. It should hit, put your hand out just below your wrist is a bone right there. 
if you have yours altered, that's where they're going to have the coat to come. So when you're moving your arm, it still won't be too short. You will probably have to have everything altered. It's just the way of the world. They mass produce everything in China, and it doesn't fit any of us exactly right, does it? Okay, ladies. Most people I see for the women wear pants. You can wear a skirt if you like, something that's conservative. And here's one of the things you might remember. Maybe you're going to interview at Shaw, and you're interviewing for their accounting position, but they may take you on a plant tour anyway. So you need to be sure you can walk. You need to be sure when you sit down, your skirt still looks conservative. What are we selling, by the way? Your brain power, OK? So we want to look like that's what we're selling, too. Ladies, what's wrong with her? She's beautiful, but what's wrong with her for an interview? Too casual. What about this big purse? You've got a portfolio to take to your interview. You want to leave that purse in the car? What's wrong with her? Too short. What's she selling? Maybe not her brain? OK. What's, what about this one? What about this one? It's charcoal gray. You liked that color earlier. What's wrong with her? Too low cut. Too low cut. It looks too fashionable, not interviewing with the belt. That dark hose and dark shoes tends to look a little after hour fashion. If you wear that shirt, what are they going to say? <coughs> what are they going to say when they go back to their office? That was that crazy lady in the leopard shirt, right? That's exactly what they're going to say. And they probably put crazy in front of your name or front of the leopard shirt. You're going to take your car key off, just your ignition key, and you're going to stick it down in the side of that portfolio. Will it fit? Maybe your fob, your... Will it go in a pocket without being too noticeable? Some of these suits have a pocket inside. It's best not to take a lot of stuff with you. You may move from office to office. You may interview with lots of different people. You do not want that bag lady sort of image going on. Let's talk about the skirts. What's wrong with this outfit? It's dark. What's she missing? What's the sleeves? And why is the jacket important? Why is the jacket important? Could. Could look bad with your shirt untucked. What else? What does the jacket give you? What? Yeah, but how do you look with the jacket on? Professional, back to that word, authoritative. I don't always do this. on. Leave the coat on. Um, what about the lady in white? It's white. It's the wrong color. That lady, is she a business major? <laughs> Hope not. Not on the job interview anyway, right? Okay. Pants. Uh-oh, let me go forward. He's not interviewing for a business job. He's probably a rap star and multi-million dollar mogul, and he looks perfect for a rap star. He does not look good for a business attire. I can't decide if she's fashionable or a bag lady. But again, or both, or both, not for an interview, okay? Let's talk about hose. Ladies, really sheer hose, preferably this color, but no tight and no patterned hose. You just, you just don't want any of this to stand out. All right, gentlemen, do you have a pair of dress socks? Okay, they're about, go to TJ Maxx or Marshalls. They're about $8. Don't wash them with the towels because they'll get all nice of fuzz on them. But these socks are taller. So, gentlemen, they're going to come up to about halfway up your calf. When you cross your legs, we don't want to see any hair. No hairy legs. So these, are, these socks will be taller than your regular socks. Some of them may even come up to your knee. Okay? So buy one pair and keep one nice pair. 
Why don't we want to see your hairy leg? Distracting, it's gross. Okay. Um, what do the red socks say? Crazy. What about these? Crazy. What about no socks? L little dirty, right? Yeah, I agree. I so agree. Okay. No vest. No vest by itself. No tight vest. No turtleneck. Where's he going? To the beach. White shirt. Gentlemen, you can wear a little white pocket square if you want, but look how bright you look in a white shirt. You just look a lot better. Ties. The best ties are a solid color with a repeating stripe. Yellow, I mean, um, red, blue to match your suit. If you wear a tie with beer mugs on it or baseballs, South Park, superheroes, or money, what do you think? Childish. What? No. <clears throat> Maybe, though, at the sacrifice of customer service, or I don't know. I don't know. That's right. That's right. Okay, let's talk about the tie. The tie should hit your belt buckle. That's too short. That's too long. I had Tina upload a video. <laughs> what on how to tie tie if you want to practice tie all you need to do is stop by room 240 of the library miss rapey will grab you a practice tie we've got i believe some of the ugliest ties ever recorded people have donated ties and they were too ugly for the clothes closet so we've got them and you can take one home you can keep it you can practice with it i don't know if you're following us on uh, twitter but there's a one from last week of us tying somebody's tie in the office. So we, we all know how to tie a tie. We will help you. Fit matters. Get it altered, not too tight, not too loose, not too short. Gentlemen, if you wear a belt, it needs to be brown or black or burgundy, preferably to match your shoes, okay? No uh, wild western belt or bolo tie or hat. The shoes on the left are good. Now, you may wear these in your regular job, sort of these deck shoes or slip-on loafers, but you really, for the interview, need a wingtip lace-up or a wingtip-looking slip-on. These are, these are expensive, so go ahead and ask for your graduation money now so you can start shopping for your business attire. There's a clothes closet in the Dean of Students' office right across from the bookstore. So if you need help finding some clothes, they'll give these to you. Folks donate clothes all the time, so stop by and grab some. Ladies, preferably closed toe and closed heel. Look at it, make sure it's not too, not too dirty and scuffed up. No open toes, no evening shoes. You might have to do a plant tour. You need to be able to walk. You might go for several buildings and interview somebody. You don't know what they'll have you do on the interview. Some of these interviews are lengthy, so be prepared. They may want to show you something. I say no purse and no briefcase. They're quite bulky, and I don't know if you saw our offices before we started the remodel. They're tiny. There's no place for you to put them. You've got to slap, slip it back and forth. If you do take one, a dark black match your shoes, not a fashion purse, not a backpack, not a messenger bag. All right, let's count jewelry. Earrings are two. Dangly swinging earrings that mesmerize everybody are four. Watch is one. Necklace is one. Ring is one. Count, count what you got on today. Two. I'm missing two. Zero. You're a millennial. You don't even have a watch. You have a watch. You're radical. One watch. Okay. No, no more than five. Okay, and preferably very conservative, a watch if you wear it, wedding ring if you're supposed to wear it, simple earrings, ladies, no earrings, gentlemen. Remember the 80-year-olds aren't going to go for a guy in earrings. Take out your spacers, take out your earrings. Um, take out eyebrow piercings, nose piercings, and take out dangly, dangly earrings. Do you ever talk to somebody that's got dangly earrings? Are you almost hypnotized? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's the same thing as stirring the cup. You saw Get Out, right? 
that same sort of thing. You're, you're hypnotized with that, so don't wear those. Let's talk distracting. All five of these pictures are distracting. What's wrong with her? Earrings, necklace, bracelet, dangly counts double. Is the belt distracting? What's wrong with him? He's rolled up his suit. Collar's unbuttoned. Color, red. The vest, and look, his tie doesn't match his, reach his belt buckle. Okay, she's got a suit on. What's wrong with it? All those buttons, are they distracting? Is that all you see? Yep, kind of all you look at. I was on a search committee, and we were interviewing a high-ranking official for the college. She wore a suit. She looked very conservative, but she wore a scarf, and she had it leaked through her lapel and had two knots in it. Well, she got nervous, and she put her hands on that scarf, and she moved it back and forth during the entire interview. From that point on, I did not hear a word she said. All I was doing was just staring without blinking, looking at her scarf. It didn't make a great impression. It also told me she was nervous and messing with her clothing. Once you get this stuff on, it ought to be, forget about it, go on with the interview. Okay, gentlemen, one of the ladies in the class is going to take you to the nail shop. She's going to have your nails done, your eyebrows done, and you're going to buy her a hamburger and a milkshake for her time, okay? It, it is fine for men to go to the nail shop. Guess what they want in the nail shop? To be paid and get a tip, right? <coughs> okay. The unibrow needs to go. Yeah. You, you just got to do personal grooming. It's just part of life, okay? Ladies, what? What, Charisma? What? <coughs> it's, it's, it's not good. Okay. If you have long hair, you probably want to wear your hair back, off your face. Look how bright you look. Look how smart you look, right? It, if your hair is messy... Well, that doesn't sound good. If your hair is covering your face and you're a rock star, it's fine. Does it look a little like you're hiding something, though? Maybe. Maybe. Okay. <coughs> what does that man do? What does he do? You like that one? Why do you like that one? Would you go hire him? You like that? What about that? If you laughed at those on the right, you got it wrong. What is your first impression of him? He looks smart. Does he look smart to you? He looks like a go-getter. He looks earnest, energetic. These three you want to hire quickly. <coughs> Here's why you need to go to the nail shop. Who has pulled a motor this week? Okay, you're going to need to go to the nail shop with the ladies, okay, because you got grease under your fingernails. Um, you're hiring this person, and you need them to do Excel spreadsheets and pivot tables. Can they do it? What are you worried about? Nails are too long. Fake nails. Okay, they're a little too long. This is just for the interview. Maybe you can relax a little bit. Neutral or no polish. Are you worried that he or she here with the red nails is going to do their work or be worried about chip nail polish? That is great for 4th of July, for the backyard party. It's fine. It's, it's great. For a job interview, it's a glamour don't. Let's talk about scent. If you use scented deodorant, scented body wash, some of that Axe hairspray and cologne, and I can smell you before you're coming, you're going to make me throw up. 
if I'm interviewing you and you make me throw up, am I going to extend a job offer? No. So let's try some unscented deodorant, very little fragrance. Somebody should not smell you unless they're up in your face to hug you, right? Um, let's talk about being clean, clean clothes. Don't smoke before the interview. Don't smoke at all. Our insurance, what is it, Miss Gracie? Is it $75 a month? We have to pay an extra $75 a month if we smoke. How many, with compounding, let's do net present value, how, how many years quicker can I get to the beach if I don't smoke? 75 a month for 30 years? Can I get to the beach about two years quicker? With compounding, don't smoke if you don't have to, or quit if you've started. Don't stink. Somebody, ladies, you all may want to pair up and critique everyone's cologne. <clears throat> Brush your teeth. I, I know some people that even go have their teeth cleaned about a week before an interview. If you time it, great. Don't chew gum, but you could have a mint on your way into the interview. Make sure you don't have bad breath. You're going to be up in people's face. You're going to be shaking their hands, so be aware of that. Read that. You agree? Don't you go. Cover all tattoos. Same, same net present value. How much does it? How much does a tattoo on your tongue cost? How much? <coughs> how much do you think that costs? Could I be at the beach retired a lot quicker if I didn't spend that money on that? Yeah, don't get a tattoo if you don't already have one. If you've got one, you need to cover it up for the job interview. Again, somebody 20 is going to love your tattoo. They're going to think that's cool. They're probably going to want one too. Yeah, I, I really don't either. What's somebody 60 or 70 going to think about your tattoo? You got drunk in port when you got off the ship and got a tattoo? I don't know. I don't know. Do not disadvantage yourself for any job. Skew to the most common denominator here. Okay, I probably got a cat hair somewhere on me. It's just Kenny. I don't know. She loves dark clothes. You need a lint roller, and you need to take off the hang tags. No lie, I shook hands with somebody coming for an interview. I could see the hang tag right here. They're notorious in women's clothes for under the arms. Men, you've probably got a tag right here that's sewn on with four pieces of thread that you need to clip. Hey, see this kick pleat? When I bought this suit, it had a piece of thread in an X there. You got to cut that. We're going to check you at the networking practice event. Ms. Rafi, Ms. Calabretta going to have a check sheet. We're going to make sure you're perfect and you've gotten all the tags off your clothes. Um, so press your suit. You don't have to wash or dry clean your suit every time you wear it. Try not to get anything on it. Hang it up. Let it air out. If you take it to the dry cleaners, take the coat and pants together. That perco chloroethylene that they use to dry clean clothes will change the color. So the coat and pants have to go together. Just what I said. Can you do your own laundry? Maybe. Don't bring electronics with you. Leave those in the car. <coughs> okay. <coughs> You're going to bring your portfolio, a nice pen, extra copies of your resume and your business cards. What does this stuff look like? I judged an entrepreneurship competition for uh, 10 and 11 year olds yesterday at City Park Elementary. They didn't use stuff this crazy. They look very professional, so leave that stuff at home. Okay, what you might have, your references, 
past work examples. Maybe if you're interviewing for a marketing job and they want to see that you could design a brochure, take a copy of what you've done. Have you got any recommendation letters from LinkedIn? How you meet the job requirements? Maybe you have a portfolio. Make sure you have extra copies of your resume to leave behind. Okay, let's talk body language. I'm usually cold, so I'm bad to cross my arms. Now, this probably means I'm cold, that I'm not mad at you. But if you don't know the difference and I didn't tell you, what does this make you think? A little angry? A little cross? Sometimes, too, you give a lot of information by your body language. Um, you need to have a firm handshake. We've practiced that a little. We'll practice that some more. What if your hand's sweaty? Before you go to shake hands, rub it down your backside, be ready, go for the web, pump twice, make eye contact. Have we practiced handshaking? Get up and shake two people's hands. Look in their eyes so you can see their eye color. Practice. <coughs> I'm probably catching. <coughs> say your name. Hi, I'm Dr. Helms. Very good. Dying. Let, let me let me see some of my weightlifters. Hey, I'm Dr. Helms. Good, very good. Let me see. Hi, hey, Dr. Helms. Okay, Ben, that's too tight. What? That, that's your that's your that's your P90X handshake. Okay, watch the person's age and gender. Don't kill them. Hey, I'm Dr. Helms. Your hands are sweaty. Wipe them on your butt. Okay, you good? How do we do? Good? Um, do we do good? No, no. All right, did anybody squeeze your hand too hard? This, this isn't a weightlifting competition. You're not in the gym. You're not doing P90X, okay? Consider their gender, their age. You're not trying to kill them, okay, with a handshake. Hey, if you go on the interview and you like the interview, ask for the job. Say, I love this opportunity. I'd love to have this job. Okay, aim for the web, pump twice. If you observe their eye color, that means you've looked at them long enough to know you've got beautiful brown eyes, but that also means you've just made a bit of a connection with them. Let's talk about name. Who has a difficult to pronounce name? Okay, it is. Is that the first or the last name? First name, Andrew. Okay. Say it one more time. Fonda Merva. Fonda Merva. And you're from where? Okay. So Andrew's going to introduce himself. I'm going to say, <clears throat> hi, I'm Dr. Helms. He's going to say, 